talk about the phases or states of matter. There are a number of phases and states that we could consider, but at this level, we're going to consider the solids, solids, liquids, and gases as the three phases that we really study in this course and most of general chemistry. Um, so let's start with the solid phase. And the solid phase, in the solid phase, particles have a rigid, definite shape and 3D order. And by particles, we're referring generally to atoms, molecules, and even ions. So ions will be particles for us as well. We'll draw these drawings in terms of atoms, but we can also draw, replace these circles that I'm going to be drawing for atoms with molecules and everything still applies. So a definite, a rigid, have a rigid definite shape in 3D order. Well, I'm going to be drawing this on a 2D piece of paper, so we'll draw at least two dimensions. And notice that I'm drawing them close together, essentially touching, but not quite. And ideally, they're all the same size because the atoms should be the same size, but my attempts to draw them may not be. And so uh, the idea here is that they're just so if you go uh, X distance to the right, you'll get to the next atom. You go the same X distance, you'll get to the next one. And if you go in other direction and if you go in the third dimension, there's order. Rigid and um, the particle A is next to particle B now. Particle A and particle B will be next to each other. I mean, for long periods of time. I want to say infinite amounts of time, but things uh, absent anything happening, they'll be next to each other. Now, um, we've mentioned before this concept of zero Kelvin. Zero Kelvin as the temperature at which all motion stops. Oops. I think we're going to mention it later in this lecture outline. But <clears throat> anyway, zero Kelvin is the temperature at which all motion stops. And all materials, uh, it's also called absolute zero, because it is the lowest temperature. And everything is above absolute zero. And so everything has higher temperature than that. And what we will see is that everything, even solids, have kinetic energy. <clears throat> and kinetic energy is energy of motion. And we're gonna talk more about this again in this lecture outline, the topics get a little like you're trying to talk about one thing and you've got to talk about another thing, but energy of motion. And what I want to do is I want to tell you how that motion exists in solids. And the motion for a solid, the motions are vibrations. <clears throat> So I'm going to draw vibration lines here and just a representative sample for some of the atoms. All of the atoms are really vibrating. They're vibrating in place. Okay. And so um, instead of so particle A and particle B, they're right next to each other for as long as nothing happens to them. And then our picture is that within that, they are vibrating. And this goes for atoms, this goes for molecules, this goes for ions. Uh, and this is our picture of a solid. Now let's do our picture of a liquid. And for liquid, the particles, the particles, let's see, solids have a rigid definite shape. Um, here, the particles are just about or almost as close as in the solid phase. Particles are almost as close 
as in the solid phase. But have no order, or let's say this, have random positions, uh, but have random positions. and can move amongst themselves. And we're familiar with water <clears throat> and other fluids being able to flow. So liquids can flow. That's an N there can flow. Liquids have a definite volume, but no definite shape. Liquids have a definite volume, but no definite shape. And our picture then is going to be of a liquid in a container. And so we might imagine the bottom of a, a container like this. And then you're gonna draw them essentially as close as in the solid phase, but no positional order. So you can see, well, I actually have three in a row there, so I better put the next one someplace else you shouldn't be able to have long range order. They should be random and yet they're close together. So it's a little, there we go, something like that. And when we draw the motion of this, we're going to draw vibrations because these particles are also vibrating. And even gas phase particles are vibrating. All of them are vibrating. However, the liquids, because they exist at higher temperatures, will have more kinetic energy. So liquids. At higher temperatures. And have more kinetic energy than solids. V, more kinetic energy than solids. And the way we're going to do kinetic energy, I guess, is in red. So I'm going to draw them just moving amongst each other. So I'm going to draw little arrows with them moving. And that's what allows them to flow. So the key thing here for a liquid number of key things, but one of the key things is they are not halfway between a solid and a gas in terms of spacing. They are essentially the same spacing as, now let's go third color, almost as close as in the solid phase. Yet there's no order, there's random positions. And so Liquids are definitely an in-between phase between solids and gases, but they share one thing with solids, which is the spacing, and they share one thing with, li with gases, which is the no order or the random positions. And we're doing gases next. All right, so, oh, kinetic energy, energy of motion represented in red. All right, so uh, gases, for gases, we're going to have, uh, let's see, so particles are very far apart. How far apart, you might ask? Approximately 10 diameters. And in fact, one of the homework questions says to literally, 
I love that term, to literally draw the particles 10 diameters apart and use a ruler to show it. So just be aware of that on the homework. And I will be looking for that, by the way. Uh, particles are very far apart, have random positions, and move very quickly. How quickly? Well, let's say, and this is a ballpark because it's gonna depend on how big the molecule or atom is, but let's say 100 meters per second, approximately 100 meters per second. So very fast, much faster than me. Let's see, so that's thing number one. Thing number two, what did I wanna say about, oh, um, fill the, their volume. Fill their volume. So if you let a gas out into this room, right at my fingertip, it would then move around the room to fill the room, fill uh, the container that they're in, fill their volume completely. All right, so here's my gas. I like to imagine that there it's in a somewhat square balloon. You can draw a circular balloon as well, doesn't matter, just whatever the space is. And you're gonna draw one particle and you're going to then draw another particle approximately 10 diameters away. And then another one, maybe 10 diameters, and another one approximately 10 diameters away as well. And this is all the gas particles that you're gonna draw in here. And you'll see on some of the homeworks that they're drawn a little closer, and uh, I'm on the process of fixing that. But if you ever draw me a picture of a gas, draw them this far apart, 10 diameters. Now, if they were smaller particles, you could draw more of them because they still have to be 10 diameters apart. All right, so now, yes, gas particles have vibrations. However, they are moving, like we said, approximately 100 meters per second. So they get speed lines and they're flying in straight lines in random directions. And what we will see is that gases exist at the highest temperatures Gases exist at the highest temperatures, which is called temps there, and have the highest kinetic energy. That's the energy of motion, more motion, more kinetic energy. And we're talking about the relationship to temperature as well. We will see that uh, in fact, let's just go ahead and state it. Kinetic energy is proportional to temperature. So Ke is kinetic energy. T is proportional to, is to capital T is temperature. And that means that higher temperatures have higher kinetic energies. And there's one other thing we have to do to make this correct and that's put a bar over it. And the bar over it means average. So bar means average. And that's going a little deeper in the chemistry onion and deeper in the layers than perhaps we're ready for, but by the end we will be, and we'll look back on these notes and say, oh yeah, we've been talking about that since the beginning. Uh, and we've used the bar means average when we did our standard deviation uh, calculations before. So that's not new, but always, uh, always good to define our terms. All right. So that's a good picture of a gas phase. And one of the homework questions says, draw the three phases. 
these are the and describe them and you're going to do just this now how do you turn a solid into a liquid and then a gas so essentially everything exists as solid liquid and gas um, no matter what type of atom molecule or ion it is but uh, so and let's just use an example of H2O. H2O solid is called ice and S stands for solid. L stands for liquid. H2O liquid is water and H2O gas is called steam. It's also called water vapor and as we go from one of these to the other, we will say two things. Temperature increases, and here I'm going to start using T. Capital T is always temperature. T increases. And what we've just said is kinetic energy increases, Ke increases as well more motion higher temperatures and so if you want to turn a solid into a liquid and then a gas you raise the temperature so to answer the question raise the temperature raise the t and um, then what stops all substances from being gases well it turns out that there's something called intermolecular attractions. And we'll just call them <laughs> sorry, intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces are forces of attraction. Between particles. That hold them together. that hold them together. So, if you have strong enough intermolecular forces, they will keep something in the solid phase. But what you can imagine is that, say you're in the solid phase and you're at a very low temperature. And in the solid phase at a very low temperature, there will be kinetic energy. Those are vibrations and then you get to a higher temperature and those vibrations get bigger because there's more kinetic energy and then you get to a higher temperature until these vibrations are so strong that they break them apart and then they're still vibrating but they're moving and that's a liquid okay because you raise the temperature and so what holds things together is intermolecular forces what tears them apart one of the things is increasing temperature, increasing kinetic energy. So solid, liquid, now they're moving, gas. They have so much kinetic energy that they fly apart and they're flying around the room at all kinds of crazy angles. Or well, they're flying straight, but they're flying and bumping into the walls. And that's how you turn a solid into a liquid into a gas, by heating it and raising its kinetic energy things that have stronger intermolecular forces and sort of the whole point of general chemistry, especially if you're a biology major, one of the main points for everybody who takes chemistry is to learn about intermolecular forces and how they allow things to stay together and how the different intermolecular forces are related to the chemistry and the bonding of each of the atoms or molecules.